Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all of my students. I hope you're doing well today and I hope everyone out there is doing well today. It's a nice sunny fall day here in Chicago and it's Monday the day before election day 2020 so a lot of exciting things going around. Alright today we're gonna look at using Karumba for Grasshopper. Karumba is a finite element analysis model modeler and I set up this model that actually has three load conditions so I can look at each one of those so if I go to zero zero is um, a tunnel so I'm thinking of this as a facade structure of a building so load case zero makes this tunnel load case one is a lift so it's a lift so that you can get into the building so you can get into the building and then it's also a tunnel Load case two is what I'm calling a nose, and it just kind of pokes this area back here. So we have those three load conditions, and then I, of course, can look at all of those together and see all of those load conditions at once. All right, before we jump into the tutorial, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and search me up on YouTube. Click on the big red bar that says subscribe. If you make it to the end of the video, you'll also be able to click on my big head that pops up in the upper left. Also click on the bell to receive all of the notifications. If you haven't checked me out on Instagram go ahead and search me up on Instagram and connect with me on Instagram at my first name Alfonso underscore my last name Peluso see what my students are up to they're up to some really good work this semester so you don't want to miss that check it out see what other tutorials I'm making alright so Karumba 3D Karumba 3D that's the website Karumba 3D dot com where you can find everything you need to know about Karumba. Alright, so let's jump into Karumba. So I'm going to start with a new document here. And I'm also going to start with a new file in Rhino. I'm going to go ahead and save this one that I was working on. So Karumba multiple loads. Alright, save that. Alright, so I'm going to open a new file here. I'm just going to work in large objects, feet. And I'm going to set my grid to make it easier on my eyes. So I'm going to type in DOC and I'm going to make this 100 grid line. Or I'm going to make these all 10. So 10, 10, 10. 10. That's going to give me 100 grid lines because 10 of them at 10 feet apart. Okay, there we go. A little easier to look at right now. So I'm going to start out with a plane surface. And that plane surface, I'm going to make that plane surface a XZ plane. So I'm going to double click and type in XZ and choose XZ plane and I'll go ahead and plug that in that just flips it and I'm gonna make the size of it 100 by 100 alright there you have that alright that's looking great now I'm gonna turn that into a mesh so just gonna make some scribbles for myself here so we we're, we're starting with a surface and then we're going to convert that surface we're going to convert that surface to a mesh so convert surface to mesh and we're going to do that right now I have the the Karumba 3D menu up here so we're going to do that under their utilities here they have a mesh B-reps 
So we're going to go ahead and plug this plane into BREP. And it's going to be like this super tight mesh. And if you don't see your mesh lines, it's because in Grasshopper under display, you don't have preview mesh edges on. So you want that on. You want display preview mesh edges on or control M. So that's the resolution. I don't want this resolution to be under one or else it'll crash for sure. So I'm going to make a number slider one less than 10. I think I'm just going to use 10 today, but I'll go ahead and plug that in. That's what the default was is one. I'm going to go ahead and set that to 10. Okay, so that's the mesh, mesh resolution that I'm going to work with today. I'm going to work with it at 10. Okay, I'll go ahead and just hide some things as I go. Okay. So we've converted the surface to a mesh. Now we have to tell Karumba what type of structure we're going to be working with. So I'm going to bring out a scribble and I'm going to say structure type. And in this case, we're going to say equals mesh, not mesh, shell. Okay, equals shell. So structure type equals shell. So we need a mesh to shell capsule. So I forget exactly where that is in the menu here. Is it under utilities? No. So let's bring it out and then I'll show you guys where it is. So mesh to shell. There it is, mesh to shell. So if I use my control alt, there it is. It's under results is mesh to shell. All right, so I'm going to need that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plug my mesh in. All right, and on the output of that, I'm going to make a point container. Okay, so there's all my points, because it's all about the points. Uh, working with this finite element analysis, it's all about defining support points and load points. That's what today's all about anyway. Okay, so those are my points. All right, so I'm going to work down at the very bottom at the entry, and we're going to define that entry tunnel load where we push it back in the Y direction. Okay, so the way that I'm going to go to a front view here, the way that I'm going to define my points, this is a really great way to do it, is just draw a rectangle and then use the points that are in that rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my rectangle. And I'm going to choose those points that are within the rectangle there. Okay, those are going to be the points that I apply the load to, and we'll We'll take a look at that in a second. So let's add a scribble here. And I'm going to call this one loads. And we'll put all our loads underneath it. OK. So for my load, uh, there is a load. Number two is load, and I can just choose loads. So now they've combined all the loads into one capsule here. So I'm going to change this to a point load. OK, so where are those points going to be? That's the, that's the big question. Where are all the points? Well, they're in that rectangle. So I got to do a little setup here to define the points in that rectangle. So there is in, in Grasshopper, there is a point in curve. There's a point in curve capsule. We're going to use that. Okay, so the points that it's selecting from are going to be these. The curve, I got to bring my curve into Grasshopper. So right click, set one curve. That's that particular curve. Okay. Let's keep going with it. I got to keep scooting this stuff over here. Okay, 
All right, so relationship and point. So relationship is giving me uh, a call pattern. It's giving me a pattern between zero, one, and two. Zero is outside of the curve. One is right on the curve, and two is inside. So that's my call pattern. And then these are my points. Okay, so my points to call from, basically. So I'm going to get a call pattern. And I mentioned that my call pattern was relationship. Okay, so that's that. And the list that it's calling from is that one. So now you see when I highlight that capsule, it's just those points inside that rectangle. So that's great. That's a great way to do it. I have some other ways that I've done it in the past. I think one of my students showed me this, and I like this way the best. Okay, so I'm going to plug that into my position index. And then I need a force with direction. So I'm going to do this in the y direction. So to pull that nose back. And I'm going to start with some small values here. I'm going to start with 2.555 and see what happens with that. You never know if you're going to need a large or a small value, so keep that in mind. If nothing's happening and you've done everything correctly and it's not really moving, that means you need larger values. If it's moved way, way out, you need smaller values. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep going with this. Let's, let's make this... Uh, sorry, I'm going to keep this at point. I'm going to add a panel. Panels are, panels are our friends. Okay, so I'm going to add a panel. I'm going to right click. I'm going to call this one entry, entry tunnel. I'm going to make this load zero. Make it as small as I can plug that in. Okay, so I have my loads. I also need my supports, so I'm going to add a scribble. So if my loads were applied to those points, my supports are everything else. They're all of the other points. Okay, so I'm going to add a, uh, a support capsule from Carumba and that can be found under under results there there's our support okay now what I'm gonna do is I need to make sure that I turn on all of these so make sure you turn on all of these let it rotate freely okay so those are all on that's important Okay, so my position index. So I'm going to just draw a shape. Eventually we're going to pull the nose points out, but for right now I'm just going to draw this shape. I'm just going to draw a polyline. Around all of the other points. Close that. Okay, so I have that point. That's going to define all my points. Okay, so let's bring that curve in. I can right click, set one curve. I'll choose that one. Okay, great. And now I can do something very similar to what I did down here. So let's just take these two and copy paste them and bring them up. And I'm going to replace the curve with my new curve. Point stays just as it was below. It's selecting from all of these points here. Okay, let's see what our pattern looks like. Okay, so it's everything but those entry points. So those are going to be the supports. So the load gets applied to these points in red. And the points in green stay still because those are the supports. All right, all right. Let's get this. Let's get this moving. So we're gonna assemble the model. So I'm going to one, and I'm going to assemble model. Okay, it's looking for now point. I don't plug anything into point. I'm gonna X that out in a second. But element, support, and load. Those are the three things I have.
Now you'll see here support and low, those are easy. So where's element? Element is back here from my structure type. So there's my element. Okay, so element is right there. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm not going to use point. Just putting an X to that. All right, so support, load. All right, so I need some other things to the right of this to keep this keep this going. So that was my uh, assemble model. Now I'm going to use under algorithm. I'm going to use analyze. Then I'm going to use under results. I'm going to use model view. So we're starting to see something happen down there at the bottom. Oh, something's happening. Fantastic. Okay, and the last one is going to be uh, a shell view, and I believe that's also under results, shell view. And under shell view render settings, I like to ch change my colors. It's just going to show me some colors of the stresses. I like to see that as displacement. And the farther it moves, the more purple it's going to be. All right, so let's take a look at this in perspective. So there it is. Whoa, way out there, right? So let's go back to our load. Where we have the 2.555, and I'm going to drag that in a lot closer and smaller. So we're making our entry tunnel. I'd like to get it like right around the 100 foot mark if possible. That's close enough. All right, so it's not lifted. It's just you're just going into it, just going into the tunnel, but you still can't get out of it. So we will be lifting that, but um, that we set to our load case uh, zero called entry tunnel, load case zero. So if I want to see that results case, I can go to this pull down and I would change that to zero. Okay, we don't have another load yet. Um, so let's just put this back at all for now and we'll, we'll experiment with that in a little bit. All right, so let's, let's work with lifting. The next thing to do, let's work with lifting these points up in the Z direction. All right, so let's, good idea to save this in case something happens. Good time to save everybody. Okay. All right, next, 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 next. All right, so this, this, all of this right here that I'm just kind of moving my my cursor around all of that to find a load a point load that was for the Y direction so we're gonna be lifting all of those same points I'm gonna be lifting those in the Z direction so I'm gonna have to swap out that Z but uh, why don't I go ahead and take all of this since it's it's all fine and good to be reused so control C control V drop it down Okay, so I mentioned first thing was get rid of this Y and add in a Z vector. Okay, so we're going to do that. I'm going to change this to load case 1 and I'm going to change it to have to right click to change it. I'm going to call this one entry tunnel lift. That's one. And I'm going to plug that into the load with my shift key. Okay, so I'm seeing some loads there. I'm seeing some some Z vector going up just a tiny little bit there. Okay, so if I increase this load amount, not much is happening here. Okay, 
I decrease it or increase it. Not much is happening there. So that's telling me I need a, a larger value. Let's look at that load by itself. Let's isolate it. That's one of the concepts of today's tutorial. So I'm going to go here and change it to load case 1. So that's just right here. So I see color. I see displacement color. But I just don't see this being lifted up. So it's just a matter of adding more. And I know to go from 8 to, you know, 10,000 is a big jump, but just because I've done the tutorial before. So let's see, 10,000. And I think even that, that starts to lift it. So that's where I started to get an idea that something's happening there. It starts to lift it ever so little right there. So then I said, okay, that's 10,000. How about 50,000? All right, 50,000 started to get me uh, enough to start to lift this up. So I just cranked it all the way up to 100,000, and now I can get through the gate there. And let's let's turn off some things here. Let's turn off this. Okay, so now that we can see right through the gate where we where we will be going. And if I add now, if I go to load case zero, that's the tunnel. Load case one is the lift. If I do those together, that lifts that tunnel up. So now when you walk through the screen here, you can get out on, on both sides. So that's working great. All right, so let's add our third load, which is this nose, nose load. I haven't talked about the bonus at all in this tutorial. And the bonus is we're going to look at Mesh Plus at the very end. You might have maybe seen that when I was showing this initially that there was some structure applied to this and I did that with mesh plus let's keep going with the nose though let's look in the front here okay so I'm gonna turn off a few of these what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a mesh on the end of this mesh of rendered shells so I'm gonna put a mesh capsule there and then I'll hide these two. Okay, just so us just so it's a little easier for easier for us to see what's happening. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is the the area that I wanna apply this nose load to, I'm gonna draw a rectangle. And I'm gonna say that I want that in between these two here so those however many points are in there that's going to be the, the the nose load that I apply okay and then I'm going to need um, I'm going to need a series of rectangles that show it's actually just two a rectangle and a polyline that's everything else so it's the nose loads and then everything else outside of that okay so let's let's set this up here so so we're gonna have multiple curves which is shows us something new okay so let's let's just do this one a little bit more slowly so instead of doing all the copy and paste business all right so I'm gonna choose curve that's my curve container I haven't drawn the curves that I want but I'm gonna go ahead and do that now okay so I'm gonna draw a rectangle and that's going to be this one here actually I'm going to do it from here so rectangle that'll work up to there and then I'm going to draw a polyline so that's going to go here close that okay so that's going to be everything that I need that's these two this one now this is like extremely hard to see but that one and the last one that I drew so this one 
that one and that one are going to have every every point that I need in it that are going to be the supports. So everything but the entry and the nose. And we'll see it in a little bit a little bit better. So let's do that. Let's right click, say set multiple curves. So I need this one. And I need this one. Okay, so now those are highlighted in green there, so that might be easier to see. Okay, so I need those. Alright, I hope those are the right ones. We'll find out in a second. Alright, so now there is, instead of point in curve, there is a point in curves with an S, because we have multiple curves. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. Oop, wrong place. These are my curves. My points come from the same list of all the mesh points. Okay, so I need a call pattern. I'm just looking at above, right? Relationship goes into call pattern and point goes into list. All right. So let's see what I've done here because it's still showing me it's still showing me the points within this uh, nose area. So I might have picked the wrong curve that I set in here. So let me find that curve first. Let me try it this way. That's definitely the curve there. And then this outer one. Let me try it now this way. Set multiple curves. Okay, that, that worked. Okay, perfect. Just had the wrong curve. So it's leaving out, it's everything but the nose and the entry points. So that's perfect. Okay, fantastic. All right, so now I need my, my loads capsule. Set that to point. Okay, those are the position of all my loads. This is going to be another Y direction for the loads. Okay, move some of this down a little bit. Okay. How much for this one? I'm going to try um, some of the low values like I had in the beginning there. So I'm going to try the, uh, the 2.555, just 2.555 gives me some decimal places. Okay, and then we're going to take this panel, our friend, copy and paste it. This is going to be our load case 2, and we're going to call this one our nose, our nose load. All right, so that's just going to get plugged in. Just going to save this. All right, so that's we have zero, load case zero, load case one, load case two. So I'm going to set this to load case two. And let's go to 3D here. All right, so just want to check our supports because our supports probably still have those as being part of the supports. All right, so that's definitely still part of it. So um, in this in this case, just want to look at something. So this is actually what I defined here was I didn't define the nose points, but I actually defined the supports, which is everything but where those first two rectangles are. So I'm kind of glad I'm running into this, something you guys might run into while you're doing it. So I've defined all the supports there, and then I'll change this to define uh, the loads on those two points. It's just a rectangle that's already been drawn there. Okay, so these are the supports. So 
it's going to replace what we have up here. So let's just delete what we have up here. And I can move all this up and plug this into my support and get rid of it out of this position index. Okay, so that's just missing. We've got the supports defined up there. We'll take another look at it. Now it's all of these points. So that's just another one of these point and curve deals. I'm going to reset this. Right click, set one curve. Not that one. That's not the curve I want. I want the one that's just. Try it again. I'm just going to draw another rectangle in the front view. Oh, it's actually that one. It's that shorter one. I remember that. Right click, set one curve. There it is. And then the boom, the purple shows up, <laughs> which I love. It's like <laughs> affirmation. Like, there it is. You got it. You got it. And look at that, too, in 3D. So we got a, we got a load there that's, that's working. All right. So that's our, that's our nose load. So that's our, our third load there. Okay, so just to recap. got our supports defined here which is everything but the points that we needed to move got three of our load cases we got 0 1 and 2 we can turn all of those on right now or I can go through here's 0 which is the tunnel here is the tunnel lift by itself here is the node nose by itself and then here is all of those. Alright, that's fantastic. That's exactly what I want. Okay, so now when I was showing you this uh, other version of it, let's see here if I can get one that's going to show up. Yes, yeah, so when I was showing you this version of it, uh, I was showing you this awesome structure. It's really just a, a beam, like a post and beam structure. So I'm doing that through Mesh Plus. So let's take a look at that. Okay. All right. So Mesh Plus is just something. Mesh Plus is something that you can download uh, from Food for Rhino. It's called it's called Mesh with a plus sign, or you could Google search Mesh Plus and spell it out P L. US. So one of, and I do have a Mesh Plus video where I dive deep into Mesh Plus and I'll I'll link that at the end of this video as well. So if I go to volume and I choose box. Okay, that's going to be my starting point. These G1 and G2, those are the inputs for the meshes. So mesh or curve, mesh or curve. Uh we're just plugging in one mesh. So that's all I need there, and I start to I start to see something fantastic happen already with the structure. Okay, so then we have uh, an I input, which is index face as a list. I don't need to put anything there, but these T's, T zero and T one, those will change things, and then D is my depth. So let's let's look at T zero. Let's type in one point. Or actually, it's good to know what what their starting value is. Like that starting value is 0.5, so I'm going to start there as well. So 0.5, and I'm going to add some decimal places. Okay, so I'm going to plug that in, and then I'm going to go either way with this number slider, so I can I can get thin, and and one closes it all the way. So it's a really really beautiful pattern, actually. 
Okay, so that's T0. T1, I'm going to... T1, let's see. T1 starts at 0.5 as well. So I'm going to copy and paste this. Same thing. So this is a little different. This one's a little harder to see what's happening here. So that's on the inside. So this is giving me some, some depth. Not really depth, but it's changing... Uh, the framing, whether it goes from two frames uh, or one frame. So we'll take a look at that in a second. So let's look at um, D is our depth, and that's starting at 1. So I'm going to double click and just type in 5.555. Okay, so now just kind of looking at these. So there's my depth, and then this was my size of the structure within that depth. Okay, so now whether I want it closed or not, I definitely want it closed, so I want this to be true. So I'm going to double click and type in boolean toggle. I'm going to set that to true and plug that into close. Okay, so that closes the top of those frames. So this is really, really, really cool. Like double double truss bridge structure here that makes the front of this building up. Alright, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, give me a thumbs up below. Leave me a comment of why you liked the video. My head is going to pop up in the upper left. Go ahead and click on that to subscribe to my channel. In the upper right, I'm going to put a Karamba video basics of Karamba and in the lower right I'm gonna put a mesh plus video I will see you on the next one